Oh, hello. In today's video, we're going to talk about boarding actions. Because let's face it, if you're subscribed to my Kill Team channel, you probably already have the terrain. Let's start by talking about the terrain that you'll need to play boarding actions for Warhammer 40,000. So, you do need to own the specific terrain for boarding actions, which is currently out of stock on Games Workshop's website. But um, that's okay, because you've bought two boxes of Kill Team during the Galadoc season, so congratulations, you have all the terrain that you need, okay? So you need two um, Kill Team boards worth of Into the Dark terrain, and you're good to go. You mash them together, you play some games of 40k. you finally got something to do with at least one other set of um, Into the Dark terrain, and I know a lot of you will have four of those at home, so that's good, good. If you haven't got the terrain... Look on eBay, there's probably lots of people, I sold my third set on eBay, right? But you can't buy it very easily right now. There is a box of the boarding action terrain in stock, at my local games workshop anyway, if, um, it may even still have it on Element, I don't know. But, um, yeah, you, let's face it, if you're watching this video, you've probably got two sets of boarding action terrain. Right. Oh, excellent. Wonderful. My... Thank you. That interlude was brought to you by my printer driver. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm going to leave that in, though, because it's funny. Um, rules for the game. So the core rules are free online and replace the core rules found in Arcs of Omen Abaddon. So we're not going to review the whole PDF. You can go and look through this at your leisure. Um, in general, the rules define how you move, and shoot, and fight in the Space Hulk-style terrain. There's so important things that we need to know, though. Um, so actions. Actions were a mechanic in 9th edition 40k, and they're back for boarding patrol because we've got to open doors and things like that. In boarding patrol, your leaders do not join units, which I'm going to point out now because it's going to really affect your list building. Um, you, you know, you can buff an eligible squad within six at the cost of one CP, but you are only getting one CP a turn. So, yeah. Um... Your choice of leader and how you use your leaders and your choice of units and all those things that you've learned from the past couple of weeks of trying to understand 40k list building, that link is kind of broken and I, I'm i only a novice, but my kind of thoughts around what makes a good leader in, in boarding actions is very different to what makes a good leader in, in big 40k, right? Um, there are four stratagems in the core rules that replace the core stratagems in the book. And there are six enhancements. So you don't get detachment stratagem or enhancement rules from your index. But you do get one enhancement for your warlord, which is free. Unless you make your warlord a named character, and then you don't get your free enhancement. So that's a bit of a trap. Alright? So that's boarding actions in a nutshell. I'm not really going to teach you how to play it, because you can read the document yourself and you're probably going to go with a better idea than me. I've not actually played a game of boarding actions uh, myself yet so much like the combat patrol video this is my excitement for something that i want to go forth and play all right when i've got if, if there's demand for it when i've got a few games under my belt i can uh, I, I will definitely do how to play if that's something people want so a red herring i want to say about boarding action so the game is called boarding action there are these boxes called boarding patrol which basically have nothing to do with boarding action they were released at the same time in the sort of twilight days of 9th edition. Some of them are quite good value. Now you can still get this um, nice Chaos Demons boarding patrol from Element Games. I happen to find at random. Okay. But boarding actions is not a fixed list or, or sealed deck or whatever you want to call it format like Combat Patrol. We will be list building, for better or worse, a 500 point boarding patrol from a more limited pool of units. You know, not from the whole index, obviously. Um, but... What you're not doing is buying one of these boxes and using that as your boarding patrol. In fact, some of the boxes they sold as boarding patrols weren't even legal teams for boarding actions. Okay, so put the boarding patrol boxes from your mind. Boarding patrol boxes serve no mechanical purpose and should simply be viewed as a bundle deal that they did one time. And if you see one in the, the shop, you should appraise whether you would like to purchase it purely on the value of those miniatures in that box to you and any kind of bundle saving that there may or may not be present, right? They are no, of no no consequence. Put them totally from your mind and they're mostly out of print now anyway, right? 
So the rules for your team, where, where do we find the rules for our team? Well, largely they're free online, okay? So there's this second PDF called the Boarding Actions Mustering Rules, okay? You use the normal 40k data sheets, but you're restricted to which data sheets can be used. Now, I will point out there's another really important gotcha here. A core rule of Boarding Patrol, sorry, Boarding Action, see I've done it now, a core rule of boarding action is that when you have a squad of 10, it has to be split down into two squads of five. Okay? You can have a squad of less than five or a squad of five, but if you have a squad of 10, it splits down into two squads of five. This rule is not in either of the PDFs. It is referenced, and you'll see it referenced in this mustering rules document as you go through. The rule designate boarding uh, squads is found before all the missions and we're going to cover in a minute where all the missions come from because they're in books they're paywalled the missions are paywalled just like um the chapter approved missions are paywalled behind the cards and the crusade missions are paywalled uh behind the crusade book the body action missions are paywalled in the arcs of omen book and the same white dwarf as well and that rule about boarding squads is there because it's in the kind of oh choose attacker defender blah 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 do this do this and one of the steps is separate out your your boarding squads because you can separate them differently depending on what you're doing or the mission you're doing and your opponent right but it is a rule so you're going to want to be aware of that when you're building your army list at least i wanted to be aware of that when i was building my army list like if you have a big 10-man squad, it's going to be split down into five-man squads. And remember as well, I've mentioned it on the previous slide, but your Warlord gets a free enhancement as long as they're not a named character. So if you're taking a named character, consider trying to take a secondary character in there, uh, depending on what you're doing. So for a bit of fun, we couldn't do this in the last one. I've got a sample list. I'm not claiming this is good. This is just what I'm going to try in my first ever boarding actions game, whenever that may be. All right, so I've taken the Demonifuge, uh, which is a Ferial Stern and Kaigen I'll pitch it there, because I think that they're brilliant. I, I love those graphic novels so much. I think that they're an amazing set of characters, and I think that in, in boarding action, the way it's set up, the way that your, 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 your heroes don't actually lead squads, taking the heroes that are just beat sticks, who just go around and kill things, is probably a pretty good shout, right? I'm guessing, I don't know, I'm guessing combat's going to be pretty good in boarding patrol. That's my assumption. Um, boarding action. I will stop calling it that other word. Right. I've also taken a Dogmata to have a second character. Uh, and the Dogmata is going to be the Warlord so she can benefit from the uh, the free enhancement. Right. And I went for the Dogmata. The Dogmata is not very good uh, in, in, in 40k because the buff that she gives for a unit is not great. Right, she can give a unit plus one to its OC characteristic, which is fine. Um, but she's quite good at running around hitting things with a giant mace, and she's quite cheap. And for boarding action, I think that's what you want. You want a character that is reasonably independent, that isn't just there to enhance a unit, that has other things that it goes and does. Got a 10-man squad of Arcoflagellants, uh, which will be splitting into two five-man squads of Arcoflagellants. Because for my money, one of the things I wanted to avoid... And it's just aesthetics, really. If we're going to split everything into a five-man squad, what I like about Arco Flagellants is they don't have a sergeant. Right? So you can have two five-man squads that are equal. They were created equal in the eyes of the Emperor. Um, you don't have to have, well, this is the five-man squad with, uh, you know, the sergeant and the heavy weapon and the special weapon. And then here's the other five-man squad that just has the, the rest. Right? I hate that. So, yeah. Arco Flagellants. Uh, brilliant. Split them in half. So two units of five Arcoflagellants, effectively. Yeah. We've got five Celestian Sacrosants. Uh, I've got, I'm going to go for... I haven't built these yet. So if you've got any burning reasons why the Maces are better than the Halberds, um, you know, let me have them in the comments. But I'm probably going to go for five of these with the Halberds and the Leader with a Plaza Pistol and a Spear. Uh, five Repentia, so that's four Repentia and the Mistress these days. And then Seraphim, I'm going to go for some Seraphim because they seem cool. With Hand Flamers, because Hand Flamers ought to be good, right? In, in boarding action, not that many tanks in boarding action, but lots of infantry trying to achieve things. So set them on fire. Yeah, it seems good to me. And the leader has the Plaza Pistol and the Power Weapon. So that's my... No games played. Right, but you've got to. This is the thing. This is the thing, and this is where I'm at with these games. You've got to come up with an army list before you ever play the game, right? Unless you're playing Combat Patrol. 
which is kind of the beauty of Combat Patrol. So before you really understand the game, before I, I, I couldn't even tell you what all the core stratagems are, because I don't watch battle reports, not really, right? So come up with an army list, it's probably hideous. But this is what I would think I will run. And then I will play a couple of games and I will go, oh no, they didn't perform very well at all. And I'll swap things and do things. But if you've got any any, any pointers, gentle pointers, you know, I'd love to see them down in the comments down 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 below, right? Um, so the Arcs of Omen books. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of text on this slide. Don't worry, I'm going to talk you through it. So this is the fly in the ointment with this format. You need an Arcs of Omen book or potentially a copy of White Dwarf. You need some missions, right? You can't, there are no missions available, so you need missions. There's missions in every Arcs of Omen book. Um, there's a lot of missions available to you. And now I have all the Arcs of Omen book. I collected them when they were coming out at the end of uh, 9th edition. They're sitting on my shelf. I'm very happy with them. So I can play uh, boarding actions for days and days and days because there's a lot of missions available. Right. So let's just go through it. So Arcs of Omen book one. Look, the majority of these books contain lore and background. That's the majority of what they contain. And they're about 30 quid. Uh, from Element Games, and most of them have gone out of stock on Element Games, and if they've gone out of stock, they're not getting restocked. If they've gone out of stock, they're direct only from gamesworkshop.com, right? And mostly what they have in them is lore. Now, if you're a collector and you buy the books you go along because you like the lore, then great, you've got a game as well. That's amazing, okay? If you're interested in the game and you just want the rules, I would tell you, you know, there are places on the internet where you can go and where you can try and find the rules that were published in these books um, without necessarily paying for them at least and then if you get really really into it you might want to buy the books right so let, let's talk what you need to track down so book one abaddon has the nine standard missions it also had all the core rules for boarding patrol for boarding action put a penny in the jar all the core rules for boarding action um that they've been made obsolete now by the free pdfs so all you're getting from arcto and book one is the nine standard missions but i would say that for your first couple of games you want to play playing from those nine standard missions they're the missions that add the le least extra layers of of of, of nonsense all right okay so there's your nine missions. Book two, Angron. So book two, Angron gives you six missions, and they're all missions with an attacker and defender mechanic, where it's slightly asymmetrical. Still pretty matched, still pretty even, not too zany, but they're attacker and defender. Um, and then there are rules for those missions. They make use of the narrative terrain sprue from Kill Team into the Dark. Well, I know I've got that one. Okay, this is a big compelling thing about um uh, uh, this um boarding actions business for me is i've got all this plastic just sitting in my house so rules for the narrative terrain sprue from into the dark that's the pipes and things extra stratagems and, and so here's where we get the army rules so you get extra stratagems and enhancements in uh, book two angron for space marines gray knights astro militarum chaos space marines world eaters and orcs so that is you get a pool of enhancements that you can pick in the alternative to the ones in the core rules i think there's about three for each of them usually and you also get a double page spread of, I think, six stratagems, right? Bearing in mind, you can't use the stratagems for index, but it does give you a pretty pretty close to the number of stratagems available to you. You've got a lot of stratagems. You haven't got a lot of command points. You get one a turn, just like 40k, right? But you've got a lot of options. Uh, it's, you know, it's, And it's on a nice double page spread to have open at the table as well, which is nice. Um... And I will say as well that if you are a fan of Space Marines or Chaos Space Marines, the Space Marines and Chaos Space Marines have extra sections where each famous chapter, so like Black Templars, has an extra um, potential uh, enhancement and an extra potential uh, stratagem on top of, layering on top of, because it's the slightly older 9th edition paradigm, layering on top of stratagems that were presented earlier in the book for Space Marines in general. Um, and... Also, the Chaos Legions and some of the other Chaos um, famous war bands like the, um, the Creations of Bile and that kind of thing have an extra stratagem and an extra enhancement alongside the ones provided gen generally for that army. Okay. Book 4, Farsight, has a really weird thing. It has something called Dark Depths Mode, which I don't think I'll ever play. It's where each player constructs a um into the dark board using half using one kill team board from a pool of about a dozen potential layouts of boards and then you smash them together 
right? So each player picks which one they want to use, and then you smash them together, and they don't always link up in the middle properly, and that's just in the rules saying, oh yeah, ramshackle space hook, blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of bringing in a bit of that. If you ever played Warhammer Underworlds, at least at one point Warhammer Underworlds had a thing where you brought a map half right to the table, and you and your opponent had two different maps. Is that a dream? Am I dreaming that? I seem to remember something like that, right? It's like that. You you basically have built a map as part of your army selection that your army likes that map somehow, maybe, I, I don't know, and then you smash it together with another map. Weird. But you've also got rules for using the... Um, for multiplayer missions. The multiplayer missions are hilarious. It's four up, up to four four player multiplayer missions. I don't think I'm ever gonna play them. I'd love to do it at some point. Right? If I was a little bit if I wasn't where I am in life with a baby and everything else, if I was gonna have a birthday party, right? I might have three mates around to play a multiplayer mission for eat for this. Or in fairness, there's multiplayer kill team ones as well, isn't there? It's much the same. But multiplayer is is one of those things where it's inherently unbalanced and it's hilariously good fun. Um, but we just never seem to, you know, we just never seem to be, getting two people together to play a game is one thing, getting three or four people together to play a game is, is suddenly more difficult again. You've also got extra stratagems and enhancements for the Tau Empire, the, uh, Eldar, the Dark Eldar, the Harlequins, who in boarding action are their very own fully fledged independent, um, faction, Right? And Adeptus Sororitas, okay? Uh, and then Book 5, The Lion, has six narrative dread encounter missions. So these aren't linked into, like, a narrative campaign. It's funny, isn't it? As an aside, Games Workshop uses the word narrative in two ways. It uses it to mean games that are linked together and that you gain progress from one mission to the next. That's narrative play. But it also means the kind of scenario where something really random and swingy happens where the rules are based on being fun and not necessarily totally fair and balanced um and that's the second kind the kind of old school definition of narrative so that's what i mean by narrative it really they need two different words i guess we call them scenario play right like campaign play and scenario play two different kinds of narrative i know what i mean Okay, the Dread Encounter missions are funny. One of them is basically like, yeah, this is really designed for one of the players who are playing Dark Angels with uh, Lionel Johnson. Um, you don't have to use Lionel Johnson. If you want to play the same mission as like Vashtor or Abaddon or something, I guess you could. But it's designed to have one player play the Dark Angels with Lionel Johnson in the in the Dread Encounter missions there, which is interesting. Um, the Lionel Johnson and Three Blade Guard is hilariously a legal boarding patrol so you should perhaps do that if you picked up the box that was the lion and three blade guard you didn't know that you were buying uh, a boarding action starter set but you were um there are also breaching operations a 12 mission mini expansion using the soul shackle narrative terrain so as a kill team as we all know somewhere in your house i bet i'm willing to bet there's a sprue with the weird little explodable walls and the weird little things for propping up the explodable walls well now if, if you if you weren't going to do them for narrative kill team you could do them for uh boarding patrol and you could build and paint those up as well and you've also got extra stratagems and enhancements for thousand zones leagues of votan adeptus custodes and agents of the imperium who like the harlequins are just like an extra fully fledged army in this mode of play so if you want to do a 500 points army that's an inquisitor and his war band and some policemen that he found somewhere then you you can do that that sounds really cool doesn't it I may actually one day do a 500-point Agents of the Imperial Army. And you can have an Eversaur Assassin. Because what could be better in a Space Hulk than an Eversaur Assassin? I mean, I I can't think... Even even I would have thought Space Marine Terminators would look askance at the idea that, hang on, we're in corridors and they've got an Eversaur Assassin. Mm. Mm. Eversaur. Not always the coolest assassin, but I think on a Space Hulk-based game... Maybe his rules won't reflect this. Maybe he'll be kind of meh. Maybe the Terminator will eat for breakfast because Games Workshop loves Space Marines. But um, I never saw Assassin on a Space Hulk ought to be flipping terrifying. If this isn't enough missions for you, I've not even counted them. 9, 15, 21, 
22 if you count Dark Depths as only one. I didn't put the number for multiplayer missions. Uh, there's at least 30 missions there, right? There's even more missions in White Dwarf, fighting on the Herald of Misery, which is a chaos-infested space hulk with tentacles and things coming out of the walls. Uh, I think it starts in White... It definitely starts in White Dwarf 484. I think it runs to White Dwarf 488 or so. <sighs> Bit of a health warning. Um... Where I've said there are extra stratagems and enhancements and listed those out, there absolutely are. Some of the stratagems and enhancements don't work because they refer to phases of the game and rules that don't properly exist anymore because it's 10th edition, not 9th edition. Games Workshop have said an FAQ for the Arcs of Omen books is on the way, right? But I wouldn't hold my breath. It's got to be pretty low priority, um, you know, it's a very niche thing for a game mode that already is playable. But if you want to use the extra flavorful um, stratagems, then just just be, be be aware for now that some of them just don't quite work, and you'll need to just not use those ones or or talk it over with your opponents. If the FAQ is super obvious, like what it will eventually be, but there should be an FAQ for those things in the the fullness of time. All right. So now I've explained it. We're going to get into editorializing because who is this actually for? Like, it sounds like enormous fun and I'm asked to play it. And it sounds like um, it, it, it'll be great fun. And hobby-wise, it, it makes for a good stepping stone between Combat Patrol and a full thousand point game, right? Because it's 500 points. So you get your Combat Patrol, potentially add a few bits to it, off you pop, right? But the thing is, you are layering on additional rules. So from a learning the game point of view... Sticking it between Combat Patrol and Thousand Points, going from I've only played six games of Combat Patrol, so now I'm going to learn Boarding Patrol, is kind of terrible as ideas go, because you're learning a lot more rules on top of the rules that you're already not really secure on, right? So it would make more sense from a, from a learning point of view to go for a thousand point forty k and to treat this as a variant from full forty k, whereas Combat Patrol is designed to be a starter thing. This is just a variant play mode, right? Potentially, so it doesn't really fit with GW's edition paradigm. I found this picture. This is this is from Leviathan. I went and got my copy of Leviathan off the shelf and took this picture. And this basically just explains Games Workshop's kind of view of the game now. We're not really talking anymore about open play, narrative play, and match play. Those terms don't really exist, right? We're talking about Combat Patrol. We, everybody, everybody starts with Combat Patrol and then it leads into either Chapter Approved, which is the cards or crusade which is the um the narrative linked campaign systems sort of slow growth thing open play still exists you can just play the only war mission in the core rules that's probably what open play is supposed to be but um yeah they obviously envisage it you go straight from playing combat patrol into the um into the into the uh chapter proof cards or crusade so this is a sideways thing um, if you play it and love it, though, there's enough missions here that you could make this your entire hobby if you wanted to. If you look at it and go, I don't want to collect a thousand... You know, I'm aware that I have two distinct groups of people in the audience of this channel, right? There's the people who just came here going, I like Kill Team, and I'm a bit curious about this 40k thing. And for them, Combat Patrol might be a fine thing to aim for. And then there's other groups of people who have, like, well, I've got 5,000 points of Space Marines, um... And I started playing Kill Team because I, it came out and it was shiny and new. And I kind of got sucked into this Kill Team community. But I don't really want to go to 40k with the baby's first 40k stuff. So, your mileage may vary, okay? Um, people are in different... People are in just in different positions, right? Certainly, if you're somebody who only ha If you're somebody who doesn't play 40k, who doesn't have a 40k collection, you might well want to look at Boarding Patrol because chances are, if you've got a couple of kill teams, right? You know, if you've got, if you have, if you happen to have like an intercession and a Phobos kill team, you could build that into a Boarding Patrol force, Boarding Actions, Boarding Actions force. If you had Vet Guard and Kazakin, potentially you could build that into a Boarding Actions force. If you had Chaos Cults. You've got most of a boarding actions force, chaos cults plus um plus plus blooded right potentially plus the beastmen as well. I mean that's probably five hundred points, right? 
add some kind of character. Although I'm pretty sure your um your um dark commune can be your leader, right? So it just depends where you are with this, okay? Um, but beyond that, it, it's just it's really annoying because from a hobby point of view. It makes great sense. Oh, yeah, start here, then go here, then go here. But for, you just have to have a, a mind like a steel trap. Because you'll be learning a lot of rules. You won't be layering it on slow. You'll be learning all the rules for 40k. Uh, plus all the rules for shooting around in corridors uh, in one go this way. Which is slightly suboptimal, maybe. I don't know. Final thoughts. I want to give this a go. I, I want to give this a go. I want to give this a go. I have a lot of things I want to do with 40k. Right, I have a lot of things I want to do with 40k, and I have a lot of painting I have to do, and I have a lot of, um, a lot of, um, I mean, let, let's put it this way, I've got two opponents, right, there's my wife, who, it's very hard for us to both play Warhammer, because one of us is usually having to hold pain, so, like, we won't get games in of things like Kill Team eventually, um, and the other is Zimbad, and... Again, like, me and Zimbad are planning to play in about two weeks. We're going on some holidays. Like, we're both actually quite tired. So we're playing Kill Team still because we know where we are with that. But I think if when he came around for our Kill Team game, which is usually tomorrow night, and I suddenly went, oh, no, no, let's play Combat Patrol, we'll be like, okay, we'll be there for hours trying to work out what the rules are. I mean, he knows the rules. He'd have to explain to me six times. Because I'm very feeble, feeble-minded in that in that way, right? And he's probably absorbed all of the rules from watching battle reports. But I, on the other hand, will be there going, "Um, please just teach me how to 40k, thank you." Um, but I do like this rule set. It looks simple, and it's so totally unconcerned with balance, which is kind of great. Like you only, I, I read through all the scenarios in all of the Arcs of Omen books. And it really does come through just how unconcerned they are with making it really balanced because there's so much stuff that's just randomly, oh, then this happens. And, and this could happen. You go here and do that and whatever. And it's like, this is not a format that's really designed for anybody to try and break it, I don't think. And if you find yourself saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I've really, I've really broken boarding actions. Here's my filthy list. Like, there's no meta. For boarding actions, like nobody cares, nobody nobody cares. Like that's just going to result in your friends saying, "Okay, that's fun." Um, now that you've made your point and 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 beat me sideways in this one game, which is fine, I'll give you that one. Could you bring something else next week? Right, that's all it is. That's all the forty gay community needs at the moment. It's just that one friend that goes, oh, "Okay, cool, that's really clever. Thank you, well done." Like, I, I do think you should give it. To, if people come up with a list that's absolutely cracked, and they beat you, and it's ridiculous, and it's uninteractive, I actually think it's probably fair enough to say, "Oh, actually," because some people do treat these games like a Rubik's cube, you know, to be solved for the most efficient value. And then say to me, "Yeah." that's really cool well you know clever of you you know that was really quick and you really dominated can you bring something else next week i think that you know and and the whole vibe i get from reading the books around this format is that's what the whole format is about it's the format of just having a laugh and pushing plastic around like this and i know all all games as zimbad is always trying to tell me all the time all games all games all games can be played that way right but this just has a vibe where that's like the default way to play it, if you know what I mean. So that's a fantastic thing. Um, I'll definitely paint up a boarding action force after my combat patrol, right? Because the things I need to paint up for my boarding action force, just to go back to it, why not? It's my video, I can do what I like. Where is he? There, right? So I'll be painting up the Demonifuge and the Dog Martyr. I've got ten Arco Flagellants, and I've painted up Celestian Sacrosants as well, right? Actually, only own five Celestian Sacrosants in my pile of shame. Need to go and buy five Celestian Sacrosants for my full army, right? Because my point is, in a thousand points, I'm adding in ten Celestian Sacrosants to Demonic Fusion and Dog Martyr anyway. So all the hobby I would do for this is secretly hobby for my thousand point list as it is, right? So I may well do the combat, uh, the, the boarding patrol. And the boarding actions force after my boarding patrol after my combat patrol yes i know what i mean keep up um and post it on the on discord and say look at this and then i may actually just not play 
skateboarding actions for a while and actually build to a thousand point step. I think that's more logical. Plus, the terrain is a real killer. Like, I, there's a big part of me that doesn't want to paint another half of the. I'm not going to lie to you. I own it in the box. It's there, ready to be clipped off the sprue and painstakingly masked off and undercoated and dry brushed and unmasked. But I just, I don't want to yet. I'll get there. The summer holidays is coming up. Are you really bored? Or I'll carry on with a new... I've started a new Skyrim playthrough. Members will know what I feel about that. Um, let me know your thoughts and feedback down below. Yeah. Uh, do, are you excited to play the game? Maybe you want to get into it just... At, you know, Like I say, for me it doesn't make sense as a stepping stone, as a slow grow from, from the Combat Patrol to the Boarding Action of Full 40k because of the rules complexity issue. But from a person that's buying models, especially my community where I know, not everyone, some of you are 40k players for years, but I know there's a lot of people here who are kill team, and so they have all the terrain, and they're 40k curious, and this really does give you something useful to build towards for that. So I can really see it. I can really see it. So let me know what camp you go uh, in down the bottom. I'd be really interested... If you're going to give this a go, let me know if you already have a 40k army, right? And if you're not that interested, and it's because you've already got enough models to do a 2,000 point game, that's interesting as well, I think, all right? All right, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, um, give it a like, uh, please, because it's... <laughs> what I'm trying to do at the moment is one video that's kill team focused every week, the hobby stream, and then I'm allowing myself one 40k video every week. I don't know whether I'm going to keep it up that way. That's just the way I'm doing it at the moment. We'll see where the chips land. Eventually, I'll run out of things to talk about for one system or the other. Hopefully not both, because that's going to be a boring couple of weeks. Um, so let me know. Uh, and any of you really like the video, subscribe. Join the, join the Discord. Join the YouTube channel. Give me some money. That's nice as well. Do all the things. All the things. And I'll see you again for the next video, which is due out on the weekend at some point. Usually Sunday evening. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.